What's up, TIW Mafia? JP here, and we have Big Joe, and we're joined by Matt. He Matt is the Smack Smack Talk Showdown World Champion. Is that right? Uh, I don't know if I'll say world champion, but I am the creator of Smack Talk Showdown, which is our uh, party card game about cutting promos. Yes. So how like people ask me what this was, and I sort of explained it because everyone knows what you know that other one is that C A H is. Yeah. So I said it's kind of like Cards Against Humanity, but wrestling. Is that like a sort of a decent description of it? I mean, I know you're gonna you can go into more detail than we will because it's it's such a badass idea. I love yeah. it. Yeah, you know, that's not too far off. Um, you know, the main difference between our game and theirs is that, uh, you know, for theirs, all the all the kind of the like comedic stuff, all the things like that, they're all like on the cards and you just pick which one you want to do and you play it and then hope your friends think whatever you picked is funny. Where it's different in our game is we kind of, we more give you uh, prompts on what to do. And then so then it's your job to kind of bring that. So you have a lot more freedom with uh, how the game works and uh, the cars that we have are more just kind of to help you go in the right direction. And then after that, you kind of take it to where you want to be and uh, how, how it works. Um, I can go into like a real, I can give you our brief kind of a uh, pitch on how the game plays. Absolutely. So Absolutely. We yeah. So I have a copy of it with me right here. So this is the box uh, for smack talk showdown. Um, and the way it works is uh, you play with three people at a time in a round at a time but you can play with any number of people you want and you start by drawing two of what we call name cards and they <laughs> dictate kind of what your persona is going to be for the round so this one that i drew would be you would be the beautiful hunk and that would kind of be your persona your wrestling identity hold on hold round. on i'm calling gimmick infringement on that because that's me right there <laughs> no he, he said beautiful hunk not beautiful bulk well, well, Joe, with your with your glasses with the glitter on the side, that could oh, be like a tag team. You can't knock the you know the pretty girly glasses <laughs> I got on right now. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, these cards called segment cards, which will give you a scenario, a situation that you either have to hype up or promote. Um, so, example, this one is uh, well, that's not a good one to give an example because it was blank. Uh, we have a couple blank <laughs> cards in the deck, so if people want to then add their own, uh, they can. So, for this one, was uh, both wrestlers are returning from a hiatus, both left as, left as champions, and both still claim to be the reigning champion. Who is the real champion? So that's kind of what you're going to be doing your smack talk about. Uh, we have more goofy ones in it, and that are less wrestling focused as well. Like uh, you are both pitching a timeshare and the best timeshare pitch will win um you are at a mall opening so you have to promote the stores in the mall during your promos um and then the uh producer which is the third person in the round so you have the two wrestlers going head to head and then you have a producer who kind of is playing the cards and dictating the action and keeping track of time uh, they're going to play these smack cards uh, which have various things on them that then the wrestlers have to do during their promo. So, for example, this uh, the speaker must run in place during their promo. Um, <laughs> there's about uh, 350 of them in the deck. So there's all sorts of different things. But... Uh, like you have to flex and pose during your promo. You have to say certain lines. You have to use certain things. You have to talk about certain things. And these will get played on the, peop or the uh, competitors during their promos to kind of uh, trip them up, put them on their toes, give them things to talk about. And then each one of them has 45 seconds to give the best promo. And then everyone else who's not in that current round, they're the audience and they decide on who won. Or if you're just playing with three people, the producer will decide on who won. Was this like a drunk night where you guys were just sitting around with friends and said, oh, we can come up with this game? So we came up with me and the two other guys who came up with it. We, at the time, we, all three of us worked at a uh, harmonics video game company. Um, and they do a thing every year where they have a game jam where everyone for two, three days get, you know, gets together on teams and you make a, you just make like a prototype game or whatever, just as like a team building type thing. Uh, myself, I was in the uh, QA department and the uh, two other guys, one of them, he was in the marketing department. The other guy was in the finance department. So, uh, Unless, you know, so we didn't really have any kind of like coding experience, any art experience. Uh, and we didn't want to just kind of sit on a team for three days while everyone else was kind of doing all the hard work. So I posted in our internal, you know, our internal messaging 
whatever groups and all that. And I was like, Hey, uh, I have this idea for a card game based on wrestling promos. Who wants to work on it? And the two other guys immediately were like, done, let's do it. Uh, so we just kind of, the first day we just kind of queued up our favorite wrestling promos and kind of brainstormed what we did. We came up with a prototype, um, and then after we did the whole thing and the whole game jam and we played it with a bunch of people at the, at the office and everyone seems to really like it and enjoy it. And then we were like, you know, we could really flesh this out and make a real game out of it. And then, so we decided to, uh, you know, refine the rules, build out the cards. Cause I think the first prototype maybe only had like 50 cards in it or something. Right. And then we did a Kickstarter to do that. And then we took it all and then we took it to conventions and did all that. And so then we sold out our first no. print run and now we're on our second print run with our first expansion. How did you do with the Kickstarter? Uh, that, you know, that was just, uh, or how do we do or how do we do it? How did you do with the Kickstarter? With it. Uh, with it. We, oh yeah, we did well. The first one, uh, we did, um, we, I, I think we got like right at, what we wanted to raise uh, money wise. Uh, so we were able to kind of produce it, but then we were, you know, we're on a shoestring budget to kind of do the other stuff and did a, uh, you know, we covered some stuff out of pocket, but it was all, you know, we all, everything that we did, we enjoyed it because we really liked the game. Uh, we got to travel to tons of events. We got to work at the, um, we did, you know, we did PAXs, we did Starcast, we did a couple uh, local oh. events here as well. Um, and so, you know, you know, get, just being able to get out and sell something oh, that you made yourself to people who really enjoy it is really great. Now, you guys are up in the Massachusetts area? Yeah, so we we were all based in – so we're based in Boston. I'm based in Boston. One of the other guys is in Boston. That's... And then the third guy recently moved out to Austin. Us too. So we're all – me and Joe grew up in Southie, so. Yeah, we're all right there. Very no, familiar. Question That's a uh... question for you, Matt, to cut JP off. Uh, when he, met, he brought up the fact that you guys, hey, well, you guys all drunk, and he came up with this. How can have you tried it as a drinking game? Uh, I mean, we've played it drink. We've drank while playing it, um, <laughs> but you know, not, nothing like specific drinking rules. You before. lose the promo, like, you do a shot. I mean, that's the yeah. Right, that's or, the easiest one. Loser takes a drink, takes a shot, or yeah. something like that. If, when somebody cannot do their smack, everybody has to take a shot. Right. Or, you know, we just make it, uh, you know, if you can't do it, then you can drink. If you, you drink while you're thinking of yeah, the next thing you have to That's, say. <laughs> drink okay. Drink. Now, you got, it's funny because you were telling your history there, and it's there's a, co- a wrestling comic book out there, too. Um, unpaid plug just because they're really good. It's Wrestle um, Invasion of Planet Wrestletopia. And what's funny is... You guys sort of, you guys started at Harmonix, you said. So you guys, you know, that's Rock Band and a uh, bunch of other games, right? Yeah, yeah. And then did this. So these guys were the guys that created, they didn't create Leisure Suit Larry, but they worked on the last couple of Leisure Suit Larrys and started talking and created the comic book. Mm-hmm. And it's funny just how that works, how it works like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, you work at a place with creative people. So, you you know, uh, like the, the people who did, or the woman who did like a, a lot of the art for us worked at harmonics too. Um, you know, a lot of people that we, you know, you work at a creative place, you're able to kind of right. leverage that stuff to kind of make things easier uh, for stuff like art, for feedback, for design. You know, you're working at a company where a bunch of people play games all the time. So it's really easy to sit, you know, get now, feedback. Where can network. people, where can people buy Smack Talk Showdown? Uh, you can get it uh, on our site. It's Smack Talk Showdown.com. Uh, and, we have the base game, and then we have our uh, first expansion pack, which is this uh, yes. lewd attitude, which is a hundred card, uh, you know, not safe for work attitude era inspired pack. So it has more of the kind of more of the raunchy cards in that one, whereas our base game is just kind of all ages, everybody can play it. Okay, that's a good way of doing that. Um, having the to sort of the adult card separate one, yeah. it's an add on, but two. You know, a kid can a kid can't go in and buy a lot of those other card games right yeah. now. Yeah, that's one of the things you know we've, when we were kind of figuring out what we wanted the uh, card game to be and how what kind of cards we wanted to write. Uh, you know, a lot of the party card games that are out there are all you know adult focused. They're all the same. Right. Like, oh, this is, they're all like dirty questions, dirty answers, this all stuff like that. And you know, we kind of didn't want to just do that as the fault. Like that's you know, kind of not that it's not 
hard or but it's just like what every single other party card game does and the point i'm you know like i said the base game itself all the, like all the cards themselves are family friendly but if you and your buddies want to get you know yes you know like curse of a whole bunch and say a bunch of terrible things to each other like you can totally do that but nothing on the cards say that whereas on the expansion some of the cards <laughs> say some of that stuff okay jp and i grew up together so we say that stuff to each other all the time <laughs> Joe, true story. Joe was my bully growing up, so I was. <laughs> it's um. Now I bully him, though. Yeah, I yeah, push I, him I, around. I've made amends in the table of the no. term. <laughs> do you guys do like a lot of like Boston? I mean, not this past year, but yeah. it's starting to come up again. Boston has had a ton of like local independent wrestling shows. Do you guys do go to a lot of those as fans? Um, the ones we would go to when we did, we went to a handful of beyond wrestling shows. Oh, I love beyond. Yeah. It was the kind of the primary ones that we would go to. Um, like I, a lot of them though, they've run out, you know, kind of out in the suburbs out and yes. farther away. And for a while, you know, I'm living in more like Brighton, Alston area. Okay. And, yeah. So, but you know, so getting out to some of the shows that would, that are farther away without a car was kind of, you know, hard to do, but yeah, be, you know, yeah. Back when beyond was running shows, that was kind of our, one of the primary ones we would go to. Yeah. They're starting back. I know they're starting back up. They're still, um, they're not, I don't think they're fully open yet. So the tickets are still a little pricey on beyond yeah. for us. But, um, Joe Salenzo, one of our fans who actually told me he wasn't going to be listening this week. Cause he had to work. He might be sneaking <laughs> it, sneaking headphones in, but he said he's a fan of the game already. So awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we would go and we would go to you know, anytime a show came to like the garden or something, we would always go to that. Yeah. Oh, you have to, you okay. have to. Yeah. But that's, did you guys do good at Starcast? I would imagine there that, that, that. So, so yeah, Starcast was interesting. So the two and Chicago, we did extremely well. We sold a ton of stuff. The first, we did the first one in Chicago. Uh, that was you know, or I forget where we were at stock wise, but we sold a whole ton there. And then the second one in Chicago, we were at the tail end of our stock and we ended up selling out the like remainder of everything we had, okay. which was great. Uh, the Vegas show wasn't as great for us sales wise. And you no, know, mainly because the show itself was in Caesar's palace and there's a lot of other stuff to take yes. the money and attention yes. in Vegas than, you know, out in the suburbs of uh, Chicago where you're at a hotel and there's nothing else around. Um, and then the final one we did was in Baltimore uh, okay. where at that time, at that time though, we actually didn't have, we were out of stock at that point, but we had already kind of signed up for the table and all that. So we were, we had, we did a um, kind of small promo card run of like 10 cards uh, that were all Baltimore themed. And uh, so we kind of, we sold some of those and we just kind of did some promotion of the game at that one. So we didn't really do too many sales for that. I got okay. a convention. You might want to look into showing up and putting out a vendor booth. Yeah. And that will be this coming, I believe it's in August. It's called Terrificon. Oh yeah. Yeah. We've heard of them. Yeah. yeah we, well, we this coming, this coming event, there. they're going to have a bunch of the AEW stars, mm -hmm. including Darby Allen. Oh, nice. So yeah. that might be a good place. I've, I've been there. I've worked there the last couple of years. Uh, and there's a ton of wrestling fans there. Oh, that's I think great. the game would do splendid. Yes. Yeah. Splendid, Joe. How hey, old are you? I'm showing my age, all right? Splendid <laughs> is a good word. No. You should learn that. Have you had feedback from the? Have some of the wrestlers like seen the game and given a little feedback on it? Yeah, so we had a handful of wrestlers play it. So we do um, we do a live show at PAX. Uh, okay. Unplugged in the PAX East, where it's we call it the Extreme Cardboard Wrestling, uh, and for, oh. we do our for our Champion of Cardboard, as we call it, where it's a single oh, elimination nice. tournament where we do uh, game devs versus pro wrestlers. Uh, so we you know we get a couple of game dev people, and then we get a couple of uh, indie wrestlers to then play the game head to head live in front of a you know in front of an audience at PAX and we also did a streamed version for PAX online and then we've done a couple streams on our own where we've done the same thing um, and they all really love you know all the ones we've done and all we all the wrestlers that we've done it with have really enjoyed it um, and there's a couple and there's a couple wrestling schools and I don't remember which ones off the top of my head unfortunately who have uh, you know we've given it to a wrestler or someone at a show or that they've played it and you know they will then bring it to the wrestling school and use it during their promo training and they say you know it's really helpful because it's just it 
because again all of it is is just here's a here's your name so here's your you know persona you gotta do here's the yeah. here's the rant you know here's the scenario you gotta hype up and then you're just gonna get random things you gotta be able to you know think on your that's, feet that's a really great idea actually i know I, I, you know i'm friendly with a lot of them a lot of the local schools yeah um that is amazing it's not uh, just now, a game it's a tool it's a it's a it's a learning tool. I'm I'm gonna show up at Pax East and I'm gonna try to I'm gonna do a run in. <laughs> yeah. I don't run very quickly though. I was say, Matt, if you saw him, he don't run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You saw Happy Gilmore. Remember when that guy yeah, was yeah. chasing him down? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll make you know we'll, give, we'll put in some buffer time to you know pad it out for you. <laughs> that's that's such a good because I think that and I think you guys having like a, the like you said having the live thing with the wrestlers and a couple of the game developers playing it that really samples the game for people yeah yeah it really shows you know kind of shows it off and uh you know the game itself is really simple like there's not it's not very complex but it shows it off in kind of more of this like grander scale where you got people on stage they all have mics you have a crowd cheering for everybody and you know making noise and getting rowdy and all that so it really kind of just shows off what the game is at like the highest le- you know at the <laughs> highest level of what it can be and then you know you can just bring that into your apartment or your house or your living room now what was it like when you guys are sitting down like you showed us the two cards for the name the big hulk yeah what was the process of coming up with those type of things were you guys just sitting around throwing throwing adjectives at each other yeah so for for the name card it was just a matter of we just kind of came up with like two giant lists uh, uh you know of, of the like what could be a first name and what could be a last name and then we kind of you know pick ones out saying like oh this one would be like if this one was matched up with this one somehow like those two would be kind of funny and then you know this would naturally kind of be funny with others at the same time and then just figuring out what so that one was pretty simple and easy uh for the segment cards and the smack cards uh, a lot of it was um it was a mix so a lot of it was you know we would just watch Tons of old promos, tons of old segments. Uh, just watching a lot of like bad wrestling too, as well, just because that's where a lot of the more uh, funnier cars we would get inspiration from, and you know, just see, and just kind of getting ideas. Um, but then at the same time, we didn't want to make the cards too kind of in the weeds or too you know inside baseball with what we were we were talking about. Um, and then so a lot of the other cards were just stuff like, hey, this we just think this would be funny for someone to do. Or this is like the one like they have to promote their timeshare or something like that. We just think that would just be like a funny thing if, you know, you're kind of in the mindset like, all right, we're going to we're going to fight. We're going to hype up our upcoming match. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, you have to promote a timeshare. And then while you're promoting a timeshare, you have to talk about how you're going to like send your opponent through a table while you're, you know, flexing and posing. So we just thought. Uh, so it's like a mix of that. And then, you know, we kind of threw in some kind of inside jokes where, you know, if you're a wrestling fan, you'll you'll get the reference. Where, or if you're not, it it's not like it's going to go over your head. You'll still understand what we're talking about. Now, when you're playing and you're cutting your promos, who do you channel? Oh, man, that's a tough question. You know, I guess it depends on the cards, but any uh, pretty much uh, for me, I'll just channel scott steiner in terms of i don't think i'll just not think too much about what i'm saying and just kind of just say whatever kind of comes out Uh, i found that's at least for me it's the easiest way because if i try and think too much you know you'll start pausing you're saying a lot of filler words and i just found like up you know whatever just just, first thing that comes into your head just kind of let it out and you know hope for the best just don't don't tell them that they don't tell them that you're half the man that they are right exactly no i'm gonna i'm gonna piggyback off of jp's question his comment there and say um cut the promo for the game oh shit <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right hey and, and in all fairness you can then pull the pull the card or whatever and give jp a, <laughs> he'll have to cut a promo. oh no 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 you are giving him the card he gives it to you Okay, I'll cut All the right. promo. I think that's a good idea. I'll I'll cut the promo, you know, hyping up the game, telling why everybody should uh, should buy it because they should. And then I think we should play. Maybe we can play a round between the two of you guys, and I'll be the producer for you too. And by the way, your smack card, you have to brush your teeth while you're doing it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Wait, I'll just take them out. No, 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 no. Hang on, <laughs> hang on. That's that would look really bad. I just realized <laughs> as I did it myself. Uh, <laughs> no smack card for you. <laughs> All right, now let's go. All right. 
Um, so here, I'll just I'll give myself a uh, name for for this to help me get into character. All right, so we're gonna <laughs> so I'm gonna hype up Smack Talk Showdown as the mysterious demon. All right, okay, here we go. Oh, you know what's coming. The mysterious demon has brought to you the best party card game that has come out. Smack Talk Showdown. Oh, yeah, brother. That's right. We have 550 unique cards for all your mysterious action that can turn you into anything from a demon to a dentist smack talk your friends your family your relatives your enemies all within the smack talk showdown and you can purchase it right now at smack talk showdown.com for the low price of 29 or 24.99 that's <laughs> <laughs> that was very mysterious demon like thank like you Touched with a little bit of macho man. Yeah, well, that's like, a, like passed, lots of... he became the demon. Right. Uh, you know, let's we've you know we've played with a lot of people and we found that's uh, if you know that kind of the de facto is I don't know what to do. I'm going to do a, a, a macho man impression. Macho or Logan, going. I think people yeah. would like default to. Yeah, perfect. It's, yeah, either Macho Man, Hogan. Sometimes people will do an Ultimate Warrior one. They just kind of like, I'm just going to scream and shout random things. <laughs> a little bit of Stone Cold, a little bit of The Rock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right so I'll draw. First, JP, you were right. All right so we'll, do, we'll do a full round up with you guys. Oh, so right. I'll draw you guys name cards. Uh, I'll draw a segment card. I'll play smack cards on you. And, and what's, uh, what's cool is we have three people here now. But if you have more than three people, everybody other than those three is the audience, and they get to vote, right? Yeah, so they so they get to vote on who they think won, and we also have card or smack cards that involve the audience as well. Okay. Which um, so there's ones that, like they have to chant certain, you know, like it'll be like oh the audience has to chant something for ten seconds <laughs> during the promo. Uh, there's some that it's like oh you you have to pull in an audience member and they're now like your manager or they're now doing the promo for you. Uh, so it, you know, that was one of the things we found at, for a lot of uh, other party card games is what ends up happening sometimes is if you're not in one of the kind of active roles or whatever, um, you, you know, you're just kind of, you know, either sitting around or you're not really doing anything while the other people play and you're kind of waiting on your turn. Whereas, so we put in these audience cards to kind of give everyone who's not in the current round kind of, opportunity to participate as well and you know give them and you know someone says not uh, familiar with it or doesn't know kind of what's going on you know maybe they don't know really what a promo is maybe they don't know how it goes uh you know they get a chance before their turn to kind of get a little taste of what they need to do or they you know they just see other people doing it and it just ends up kind of working out okay yeah all That's right so Bruce is an electric toothbrush that will change the way you think about brushing your teeth. With powerful sonic technology and ultra gentle bristles, the Bruce redefines what it means to have super clean teeth. It's like that feeling you get when you just leave the dentist, a fresh, whole mouth clean every single day. Our listeners get 15% off their total purchase with code POD15. Follow the link in the show notes and enter the code P-O-D-1-5 to get your exclusive discount and upgrade your oral care routine. I'll draw name cards for each of you. All right, so JP, for this round you are going to be the sadistic patriot. Oh yeah. All right, and Big Joe. That would be fun. Joe would be funnier as the sadistic patriot wearing the <laughs> navy hat. <laughs> you are going to be the emerald dragon. Ooh. <laughs> You're a Chinese person. All right. And for this round, Irish let's, dragon. Let's pick you. A, I'll just pick you a good one. All right. This one should be good. So you are 
competing in Worcester, Massachusetts. The wrestlers are siblings who have been rivals since birth, and neither will accept defeat. All right, so I'll draw. Um, so for before each round, so the producer will draw three smack cards in their hand. So they'll have three of them to play on the wrestlers. And then at the end of the wrestler's promo, they discard any leftovers and draw three more ones. Uh, and we found this is a great way to prevent people. Because when we first were prototyping it, we found uh, uh, people would kind of pick, you know, they would draw their three cards and go, oh, this one would be good for the next person and just kind of hold on to it. And so someone might not get as many cards played on them. So we're just like, you know what? After each person's done a promo, you discard them all and you draw a bunch of new ones. So it really encourages people to just play as many you know, cards on the people. So and shuffle them through and keep yeah, and they going. just reshuffle them. And we have, you know, so many of them. Chances are you're not going to go through them all in a game, <laughs> anyways. That... Um, all right. So JP, we'll have you go first. Are you ready? All right, I am ready. All right, and begin. Oh, the sadistic patriot. I fought for my country. I've lost many battles. I have never once lost a war. I've never been defeated. The speaker completely. must emulate the mannerisms of a famous wrestler during their promo. I've never been defeated manually. I'm running out of. I'm running out of stuff. I've never been defeated completely. The and speaker I, must drag the current city through the mud. I, I I would talk about Worcester, Massachusetts as the sadistic patriot, but this is part of my country, and as crappy as this city is, I don't have to tell you guys how bad it is, because you know, because you came here, because I know nobody at Worcester can afford a ticket to the show, so all of you guys traveled from the outside and had a part. about their opponent's bad luck in the style of the blues. And my, how do I sing the blues? <laughs> My, my, I don't know how to sing the blues, but I can tell you this. My brother is going to lose. He and cannot. <laughs> well done. Well done. All right. was my first try. All right. So Emerald Dragon, are you ready? I am ready. And begin. I am the Emerald Dragon. My brother. The sadistic patriot thinks that he can beat me. He is mere human. I am a dragon. The speaker must talk him. about their celebrity outside of wrestling. Now, outside of wrestling, the Emerald Dragon has a store where he sells golden dragon eggs. And I am world now, and I sell them to the, to the stars. All over your country, Mr. Patriot, my brother, you are nothing. You can't reach my level of celebrity. You can't beat me in the, the speaker. Ring. Must describe themselves as if they were an impart as if they were an apartment listing. Now you see, Mister Sadistic Patriot, my brother who will lose. I have spacious <laughs> muscles. I have multiple places that I can go to the bathroom. <laughs> I am large, wide. I reach the ten foot ceilings. I am wide. I have. I can view things. For miles and miles away. The speaker Lisa. is now a meteorologist. Their promo must be weather-based. Now, the heat that comes out of my mouth as the Emerald Dragon comes at your face and melts you, Mr. Sadistic Patriot. Takes your red, white, and blue and makes it a pool on the ground. And time. <laughs> I think I, I have to accept a feed on this one. I think I got beat. I, I'm for, yeah, I mean, both were good. Both had their highs. <laughs> But I think yeah, I'm gonna have to give it a big job. You you know what got me was the the do, trying to do the motions. Yeah, <laughs> and like just having to think about it as you were going. Well, that you said oh. I don't know how to sing the blues. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but I rhymed it with you're gonna lose. Yeah, that we, was good. But that's yeah. also third grade. You know, we find like there, you know, there's definitely, you know, there's card. Everybody has kind of their type of cards that they do better, they do worse for. But we always find, you know, uh, you know, we give them an extra. You know, someone's like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with that. You know, we give them an extra couple, you know, a couple seconds, and then they eventually just will say like a one liner, or they'll do something great, That's... and it ends up just working out. Well, sometimes the, the the wrong thing turns out to be the right thing because it's funnier. Oh yeah, that's what we, any yeah, but that's what we found. Uh, you know, like we we have a. Uh, uh, 
one card that's like you have to now do your promo in a in like a new york accent or something like that nice. and right and we know we've had people do that where they would just go into like the most horrendous <laughs> sounding ac- uh, you know new york accent and but you know that ends up being better because it's just funnier no. now let me ask you both a question real quick is that an apartment you would be interested in <laughs> No, I, just, no, I don't think so. Me neither. Yeah. yeah no, no, it's a it's a dump. Well, that's why I have multiple places to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Three bed, two bath, right? There you go. <laughs> now, when you guys are like when you came up with like the loot attitude and that type of thing, will yeah. there be more expansion packs, do you think? Is uh, there more? So it will, you know, kind of depend on how, you know, how well it sells. Um, you know, this is our first expansion pack. You know, we were able to sell out the first, our first of the base game. Great. And hopefully we'll be able to do the same thing with the second edition that we have printed. Um, and, you know, if, if the expansion itself does well, you know, like we have like notes and all sorts of stuff for different kinds of expansions that we want to do. Um, you know, there's ones we want to do that aren't necessarily, uh, wrestling theme, but they still okay. you know, stick within the, uh, you know, stick within the game and all that as well. So yeah. to kind of start, you know, exp- as you know, expanding out. Um, but you know, we, we, you know, because we're kind of you know doing all this on our own and as uh, in our free time. So it's really right. you know, we can't be like, all right, we're gonna have three. You know, we have three expansions planned down the road. We got all this. And we got all that. And then you know, who knows how things, but. Hopefully we, it, I mean, you know, that's what we want. We want it to sell well enough that and get to enough people that they're like, Hey, where, when's the next expansion? What, you know, what do you guys have planned next? Yeah. One foot in front of the other. Right. Uh, now who was your favorite rat? Like I, I just take for granted that you're a wrestling fan because this came out of, you know, right. who was, who did you watch growing up? So growing up, I didn't watch too much wrestling growing up. Um, I was always, but I was always like aware of it. I always kind of knew who at least the top dudes were. Uh, my cousins grew up watching wrestling in the eighties. So I played with like their wrestling toys when I was like a small kid at their house, but I never watched it. Uh, you know, I never watched re- growing up. I didn't really watch like the weekly shows or anything like that. Um, and then probably, you know, a little later I would start watching shows as they, if, you know, I was watching TV and, you know, like, a run-in show would come in and then like say like raw would come on next or tna would come on next and i'll just but, you know i'll just watch it and all that but then definitely as we once we so i was always like aware of like who were like what's wrestling who are the top guys what's kind of the how things work and all of that uh and always kind of and, and always interested in the uh kind of performative aspect of it because i've always loved uh always watch sport all sorts of sports growing up always like combat sports always watch like boxing uh mma and all that and then so and that's just like all right we're focused on the fight we're focused on this and then wrestling has all the more uh performative stuff which is yeah. what which i find you know part you know most well, some of the most entertaining stuff in it you know you know you have a guy coming out uh and it, you know like in a real you know like in boxing if someone cheats you know they're like they're banned from the sport they get you know they get fined and all that and then in wrestling they cheat that means they get a pay-per-view shot or something like that or that means right right you know their manager then has to be like chained up to, you know in the back while they're doing it and stuff like that so that um and then and then of course as we were you know as we were developing the game as we were making the game then that's probably when i started watching more you know it started as like hey i have to you know i have to be watching a lot of stuff to you know make sure like the cars we're writing are good that they make sense that they kind of are more creative and more like that uh you know we're going to a lot of conventions and you know people are going to want to talk wrestling so i got it you know want to be able to talk to them about wrestling as well uh and also through just going to events you know we meet a bunch of indie wrestlers we meet a bunch of yes. indie promotions and we start watching their stuff and all that um and then just kind of compounds into like oh you know i'm just watching a little bit of everything over here and over there um uh now a lot you know i'm not now i don't think i'm watching you know the weekly shows every week uh yeah. mostly i'll be like uh you know i'll be like checking our twitter account and you'll see like oh like here's like this match from last night was great you should go watch it and i'll go check it out or someone will be like this pay you know this was a really great pay-per-view you go check it out or um, and I'll probably, and you know, I'll watch all like the big four pay-per-views. Like I love the Royal yeah, right. Rumbles. My, yeah. Like the Royal Rumble is my favorite. Um, and I love going into that 
and it's kind of more fun going into it blind and not knowing who's going to come up when, as opposed to knowing like, oh, so and so is coming in at number twenty-three, so and so is not coming in at number five, and just kind of be like, all right, for this next hour, I'm um, like, I, it's going to be each entrance going to be like a surprise, like who's going to come in, and like, I love that. That's great. That's just like my favorite event. Go in with the the numb mind and just go with it from there. Right, like that's my right. favorite thing. Oh. Is just, the Royal Rumble match, every you know, not knowing who's coming in, just kind of seeing, and it's being like surprised at every turn, and like you know, seeing that ten seconds come up and be like, oh my god, who's going to come up next? Who's going to come up next? Yeah, right. So yeah. pulls it to the edge of the seat. Right now, what indie worker would you say has been the best at the game? The best at the game. I mean, I think so far I'm the best. <laughs> I uh, can think of a couple like local kids that I think would be great yeah, so at this had, and would be fun. Um, so we had on one of our uh, events that we did, we had RJ city was one of our competitors oh, yeah. uh, and he did really well at it. Um, uh, we've had another wrestler, big Calix. Um, he's yeah. done a, oh, yeah. yeah, he's oh, done a bunch, God. he's done a bunch of our, he's done a bunch of our streams and a bunch of our events as well. Um, and Calix he's just so much yeah, fun. He's done real great at, at it as well. Um, and Does- yeah. Does he is he able to kind of break the big Calix character when he's doing the promo cards? Uh so he stays in character, which okay. is pretty good. Yeah. This is great. Gonna, um, oh, big Calix. Oh. And our first uh the first event we did in PAX Unplugged for our tournament of cardboard, uh, our first winner there was Solo Darling and she did oh, ex- I love yeah. Solo. yeah, she did extremely well on it too. And then we also had um yeah, pretty much everyone who everyone who every wrestler we've had done it has just always done very well. It's always that's been great. all. Yeah, yeah. Th- I mean, you just named some great, like completely different in character. But I know I know Solo and Calix love each other. Yeah, uh, but they're completely different in character. So that's yeah. incredible, and and that's awesome. Yeah, but that wasn't what I expected. I expected like local guys. Uh, so yeah, you I mean, actually pulling them in from like Philly and. So um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of the guys we've done it with have been winning in Philly um, because we. Uh, so Pax Unplugged is in is in Philly. So that's so when we first did that event. Oh, we were okay. looking for, you know, we, we were looking for a bunch of uh, people who were who could just like who were already down there, right? They didn't have to fly in or didn't have right. to do anything like that. And the so the event was done as part of. First was part of League of Heels, which has been at PAX, PAXs all over the place, and they usually do video right. game rest. They, they they'll play like uh, No Mercy or something on stage with a bunch of uh, video game industry people. And one of the guys who you know helps put on that show, Pat Bear, uh, wanted to do one at PAX Unplugged, and but you know and wanted to use our game since it's a board game, and the PAX Unplugged is all right. about board games. And then he knew uh, someone from who had done the league of heels stuff with him a couple times who works in the game industry but also does uh, a ton of work with the indie scene down in philly he does a ton of work with a uh, kaiju big battle oh uh, yeah so, so he and he's also been um uh ian vaflor and he's been on our streams and the events a yeah. lot as well but he's done he's he knows like tons and tons and tons and tons of indie workers down on the Philly scene and all over the place. So initially he was able to kind of guess in contact with uh, a handful of people to reach out to and bring them in. And then now it's kind of, uh, at least, you know, for when we were do uh, the online streams and, you know, anyone can be anywhere. It was just a matter of just reaching out to them on Twitter and saying, Hey, we're doing this thing. Is this something you want to do? Are you interested? And, you know, and a lot of t- like that's how we got uh, RJ City to do I, it. That's how we got Dan Housen to do it. We just oh, sent Dan Housen is so yeah, he was on one of them too. And we just sent him a message and just asked, like, "Hey, do you want to do this?" And and you know, they said, "Yeah, sure, we'll do it." And they just and we just do it. <laughs> you know, now, it's just a matter of just messaging enough people until someone says yes. Where do you guys stream? Uh, so we are we did it on Twitch. Okay, so we don't. I so. We haven't done it regularly um, for logistical reasons, um, just time wise and uh, stuff like that. But, you know, we did it. We did the first kind of uh, big stream we did was for PAX Online last summer. And then, okay. uh, and then 
I think a a month or so ago, we did a series of streams where we just did it independently on our own, where we just had uh, two people come on for about like a half hour and just played a whole bunch of rounds. No. I have an idea that I'll shoot by you. I won't even say it on yeah. the air. I'll shoot it by you afterwards. Yeah. Someone that I have contact with that I think would be really fucking cool for that. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, but there's a bunch. Like if you do PAX East, I have so many guys, so many kids. I'd love to see get down there with you. Like uh, Alec Price would be awesome at this. Yeah, we're always looking for people to come onto the panels, uh, especially if they're local, because that makes it easier for right. No easier to convince them to come, to, you know, to come down if they're in the area. Yeah, yeah and yeah, plus yeah. they, get to, you know, they have to walk around packs a little. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I get a, like actually a, there's a couple, there's a few people I'm thinking of on the top of my head for local, so that may already be at packs. Right. But yeah, that's. I have one more piece. I have to spin a wheel. We give away an action figure every week. Yeah. And I just got to spin that wheel real quick to see who we're giving that to, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, you know, I walk through the valley of death. I'm just one of many killers that's a part of the set. Y'all be talking out your ass like it's none of us left. You must be high than giraffe pussy. Hey, what's next? Y'all don't really want the competition taking a belt. I'd rather die than take an L. Y'all don't know how I felt. I be murdering the game. You just play with yourself. You kind of want to say my name, but you got no help. I believe in Mr. Chaos. I'm rocking the bells, but it's dinner time. Fuck, I'm going to help myself. I don't want one bite, bitch. I came for the plate because I'm hungry like a dude with no food for a day. I ain't really want to snap. But you rappers on the way down I'ma fight till my last breath Never lay down Hear you talking shit But I don't care what you say now Hustle till I hit a billion dollars Any day now I'm just on this podcast Tip to hit a lick While you mumble mouth Rappers on your knees Suck a dick Claim to be a fighter But we know that you's a bitch Half you hoes ain't even writing All the lyrics that you spit I've been putting in work But y'all don't know what it is To work a 90 hour week Just to feed your kids I've been down in the gutter Fight my way to the top Thank you God for all my people Who ain't letting me stop 24 balls in and I'm only getting better Ho, sticking up the whole rap game Let the cheddar go, yeah That's part one Just wait Part two coming soon I think we got a new name this week. I haven't seen this one before, I don't think. Iceberg00316, get in touch with us. You won the EO Shirai Elite figure. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. They yell at me if I, they, they'll start yelling at me in the uh, the little chat room if I don't get that done. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's now. What's next for it then? I mean, it's uh, we already know that you've got the expansion pack out. Is it just selling out of the this and then getting yeah, the right next now, one out there? Right now, we're just yeah, focus on selling out and getting the co- you know getting the word out there, getting copies out there. Uh, you know, because we you know, like I said earlier, it's just kind of th- you know two three of us doing this in our own time. So we can, you know we don't want to get into the that set of thinking too grand and you know ta- trying to tackle stuff that's like outside you know that we're not going to accomplish so you know we kind of take things step by step like right now we're focused on uh like we recently got our shipment in built a new site have uh someone actually doing the fulfillment for us this time around where the first okay. go around we were we had everything just out in a storage unit near my apartment and anytime we just got an order and i'll just drive out there grab it and then take it to the post office yeah. um so you know we're really so, you know, we have better infrastructure set up. We got a better website set up. Um, and then now we're just focused on getting the word out there, selling copies. And then, you know, once we get to the tail end of this print run, then we can kind of be like, all right, what are we going to do? Are we just going to, are we going to release a new one? Or are we just going to kind of just get another print run going and sell it again? Well, I'm going to be ordering as soon as we're done here. So yeah, that's... one more gone. <laughs> now, I'm just going to say this to the to, to someone in our chat room. Josh, I know who you. I know you knew who I'm thinking for their um their Twitch, and how crazy would it be? Uh, Bobby D in our chat room, who's here every single week with us. Uh, Bobby's a local guy too. Bobby's another Boston guy, but yeah. he wants to know: Do you have a favorite wrestler now, and who did you like when you were younger? We already covered the younger stuff. 
Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, Macho man. Uh, so for the younger stuff, I guess I'll pick a wrestler who was wrestling when I was younger, uh, since I wasn't necessarily watching when I was younger. Um, I am a fan of Scott Steiner, just because that is a lot of the promos that we watched yeah. for the game. And I just find them just just like unhinged and just they're just fun to watch. And they're just like weird and goofy and rambling and like whatever and his early and his early tag team stuff is pretty spectacular yes what he, oh you know, yeah what he and what he was able to do at his size so he is you know so he is a very entertaining wrestler to watch before he kind of got a little more stiff and over bulked up <laughs> and Matt, um, just to I, let you know the steiner brothers do do conventions i've met them several times at different conventions yeah we saw them at a uh start one of the starcasts we were at um and then also big fan Mick Foley and all his stuff that he does. Yeah. Uh, you know, my fa- I think one of my favorite moments of all time is the Royal Rumble where he just kept coming back out as his different yeah. personas. Yes. Like that, I just love that. Um, I think he actually came out as Mick Foley, probably. I think too. I right? think it was he came out as. Um, I know it was Dude Love. On uh, I forget the order, but it was yeah, it was Dude Love. Then he comes back as Cactus Jack, and then he comes back as Mankind. That's. Um, and then now I would. I think favorite now who I like uh, I was on a Samoa Joe kick recently where I watched a bunch of his uh, just, just a handful of his matches and I've you know, always loved his matches. And he, again, he does, he's one of the other guys who we've watched a bunch of his promos to kind of get inspiration for the game. Um, and, you know, if I kind of look up, if you want a match yeah. to look up, Samoa Joe versus Necro Butcher. Oh yeah, that's one I watched recently. Yeah, they just beat <laughs> each other. Yeah, when yeah. they when they sat down in the chairs and just started slapping each other. Mm-hmm. So and, uh, yeah, and uh, you know I kind of don't. I tend not to have like a I, I, the way I kind of watch is like I don't end up having I don't have like a favorite wrestler. I just kind of go on like str- uh, streaks where I'm like oh I'm really I'm watching a bunch of this person right now. I'm watching a bunch of this person right now. Um, but yeah, like I said, Samo- recently it had been Samoa Joe. Um and uh watched a handful of the Dynamite Kid Thunder or not Thunder Mask Tiger Mask yes. matches because I had also recently watched the uh, Dark Side of the Ring documentary uh so I just want so I wanted to check out those matches as now, well is and, there is there a local is there an independent that if you see them on the poster is going to get you to the show uh yeah so independents um. Like I said, big fan of Big Calix. Um, yeah. Super nice guy. So he's, uh, but also love his work. Um, I haven't. Calix is one of the one of the guys from that circle. I have not met yet. I've met a bunch of them. Yeah, that ran in that previous. You know, um, and everybody speaks so highly of him, and he is such a great wrestler. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, you know, a lot of times when I go like for like indie shows, I kind of just go and okay. you know, like and just kind of see who's there. Um, uh, you know, I, when we went to Beyond shows and when he was working a bunch in Beyond, uh, Chris Dickinson was yeah. oh yeah, always always very you know, always putting on good matches. Um, who else? Now, would you guys think about doing sponsorships at shows? Uh, so we we did a couple before. Yeah, uh, you know, but the problem with doing a sponsorship is, uh, if, if if all that all that's really there is like our name and right kind of saying like, hey, this is Smack Talk, you know, so, and they get on the, you know, on a um, mic, you know, they're now yeah. oh, and this match is sponsored by Smack Talk Showdown. It doesn't really, you know, you know, it doesn't really do much for us. Okay, because um, the spot. At least that's you know, the kind of sponsorships we can afford, where it's like, hey, we're going to sponsor this match. It's, there's going to be a graphic on the promotion, and they'll announce it. Uh, you know, we, we right now we don't really have the budget to do like a ring mat sponsorship or kind of right. bigger sponsorship. So we found it doesn't. Uh, it's better for us just to be like, hey, can we get a spot at the merch table, or can we kind right. of, you know, so can you guys... we like sell games at the show? Like we did that at one Beyond Wrestling show where we had a little table, so we could kind of out, out with the merch table, so we could. Uh, you know, in, in, during the intermission, we could say like, "Hey, come check out our game. This is what it is, and all that stuff." I would think it beyond that would do pretty well. Yeah, it did, yeah. When because we did, they have sort of a smart crowd. Yeah, when we did it beyond, it's done pretty well. Um, 
I forget. It, I don't think it was an Evolve show that we did. It, but it was another local. Uh, this was like Ooh. three, four years ago, so I'm forgetting <laughs> which one it was. But uh, we did it at another local show that is, you know also did pretty well because it's and it, you know it stands out from the normal like t-shirts, posters, right? You know, eight by ten. So it does draw people over Ooh. to the table to see what it is. And it's sort of. It's a different size, I know, but it sort of looks like it's a collector's card box. You know what I mean? Like it was uh, yeah. like wrestler's cards in there. But so now people come over curious to see what it is. And yeah, and you uh, get yeah, them like reading. This, and... yeah, this, like for like this is our second uh, edition box. But our fr- and uh, uh, the color scheme and all that kind of stuff was definitely inspired, heavily inspired by the old uh, WWF ice cream bar boxes. I wish AG, uh, I, I wish yeah. Anthony Crane was still up here. <laughs> I'm glad he's doing what he's doing, but I wish you. I don't know if you ever saw Anthony wrestle. Oh yeah, yeah, we saw him a couple of times. Um, um, we did. We were going to have him come on to one of our PAX East. East shows, but he was he had a uh, conflict on the day, so we never got a chance to have him on. Uh, he would have been so be, good at this be awesome. because he's a young kid, yeah. but he knows everything about wrestling since the day he was born. On mm-hmm. it's he would have been incredible with this. Yeah. And, now, we're just about to wrap up. So, can you tell people where they can find you if they wanted to find you in Smack Talk Showdown and uh, where they can buy it? And... Yeah, sure. So, on uh, social media, you can find us at uh, at Smack Talk Showdown without the O's on Twitter. Uh, on Instagram, you can find us at Smack Talk Showdown full word and same thing on facebook at smack talk showdown and then our website is smack talk showdown.com uh, which conveniently is right here on our box as well so if you uh need all that information you can find it right here um so yeah this website is where you can buy it smack talk showdown.com uh, we have our uh, the base game which is this one uh which has 550 cards in it uh, all unique. Um, there's also a handful of blank cards in there. So if you have ideas for your own card, you can write them. And then we also have our uh, lewd attitude expansion, which is a hundred cards, also all unique. Um, that is that more kind of edgy, not safe for work uh, inspired cards. Is there a way that people can submit their card idea? So like when they write in a blank card, is there a way to submit that online to you guys as an idea? Uh, we don't have a formal way, but if someone does that, uh, they should just tag us on whatever their social media of preferences and send a picture sure. away. We'd love to see them. That's <laughs> Josh Richards, who Josh's family to us here says he's going to whoop our ass in the game. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't I think, think so. Mistaken. I think he'll wipe our asses. <laughs> now, guys, that's all I got for this week. Um, did, did, my, Matt. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, like I said, I'm buying the game as soon as we get done here. That's great. Joe, what do you got to say? I just get to say, like again, Matt, thanks you coming on. The game is great. I loved our little a little play. I once again, I, I triumphed over JP and won more <laughs> platform. Uh, but again, thank you. Hopefully, we help. We get the word out. We can, you know, pump yeah, up the sales. Absolutely. And hopefully, we see you, hopefully, I see you at a convention in yeah. the near future. Yeah, we're yeah we're hoping to get out. Uh, Hopefully, at least by that you know tail end of the year, we can get out to at least another convention or two. Yeah, I, I know a few people in the convention world. I can probably put it in their hands and have them, you know, whatever. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. See you next Thursday.